Number 98 from the Indicator series is Zotz, part of the William Castle Volume 2 set. Now, I kind of put off the Volume 2 set for a while because I'd never really heard of any of the movies. I wasn't sure about any of them, but I decided just to sit down one day and tackle all of them. And we jump into Zotz, which I thought was a, a an interesting premise of a movie, but it felt very much like a kind of sitcom from the late 50s. We're introduced to our professor, Jonathan Jones, who has a clean lifestyle. He's a vegan, he's health conscious, he is a professor of ancient languages at a, a university. His niece receives a gift from one of her suitors who's abroad on a dig site and it's a, a small coin pendant. He translates it and turns into a, a kind of magical person. As long as he holds the key, he can do three things. He can hurt people by pointing at them, he can slow down time by shouting zots, or he can kill them by pointing and saying zots at the same time. And with this newfound superpower, it becomes very sitcomish. And it's a movie that struggles with its tone. Its humour, even though it's extremely dated, must have felt kind of ill-fitting for the time. It doesn't quite fit in 100%. It feels kind of forced and it feels uh, as if it's better than what it actually is. It's lowbrow humour and it's telegraphed what's coming miles ahead of it. And now, this is a, a movie that I, I really enjoyed the first 20 minutes. That sitcom feel is easy to adjust into. You know, you kind of go with the flow uh, as we experience these new characters. But there's a scene midway through where it just feels ridiculous. And that's a ridiculous story. Let's <laughs> not uh, sugarcoat it. It is silly. But there's a moment where he's vying for the dean's position. He goes to the dean's house where he's having a party. He whips out a cage of mice to show off his new superpowers and of course they don't work. And you know what's going to happen and it just feels like such a drawn out sequence that I struggle to get back on board with the rest of the movie. And because it's such a silly premise and it's because it's all based around these characters and their conflicts all the way through it, it feels weird when the final third of it jumps into secret agents, Russian spies trying to kidnap this man because he's got a super weapon. And it just feels kind of silly yet again. And even the end of the movie feels rushed and forced and just uh, tacked on at the last minute. There were certain things I really liked about it. Tom Poston as the, the professor, uh, Jonathan was really great. He had that kind of earnest ability about him and I really enjoyed uh, watching him. Some of the comedic moments with his niece were really fun. I liked seeing her constantly having these dates with all these different guys but completely owning it um, and just uh, not taking any crap from any of them was wonderful. Uh, the whole idea of the, the spy element at the end of it was both tonally kind of off but I kind of liked it as well. It gave the movie more purpose and a goal to really head towards even though it still felt a little bit drawn out and a little bit um, meandering in the way of getting to that story. I kind of liked Zotz mostly. It's not one that I'm going to rush back to. It's the kind of thing I'd put on in the background and tune in and out when it has those fun little moments that I did like. I feel as if it's a, it kind of missed what it could have been. It could have been so much more, but I can only judge the movie that I actually have and that felt a little bit uh, forced together, very meandering and a product of its time that was probably dated back in 62 when it came out. I'd love to know your thoughts on Zots. Let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time on Man Be Film.